Welcome to the course on design of electronic converters. So, we were discussing magnetics design and uh, we looked into the theory of uh, transformer design. We saw the area product method. Now, let us uh, look into an example of transformer design. So, the example is chosen for forward converter. So, this is an isolated uh, DC to DC converter uh, where you have this primary and secondary and then there is another one winding also which is your tertiary winding it is called as the demagnetizing winding. And uh, here uh, you uh, the specification uh, given our input voltage is 12 volt, output voltage is given as 30 volt. So, this is the output that you require over here. And the power rating is specified as 100 watt that adds the peak power. The switching frequency is chosen as 200 kilohertz and we wish to operate uh, with a duty ratio of 0.5. Now, first of all you have to do the basic calculations. So, for uh, this converter your VO by V in that is given as N2 by N1 into D and uh, your uh, uh, so N2, N1, N2 what are this? So, this is your N1 is the turns ratio assumed N2 is the turns ratio over here for the secondary winding and for the tertiary winding the number of turns are N3. So, for uh, this your uh, N2 by N1 into D. So, since D is already chosen as 0.5. So, N2 by N1 when you also substitute for VO and V in you get it as equal to 5. So, note that that this 5 is just the ratio of N2 by N1 and uh, not that N2 is 5 and N1 is 1. We have not still decided the number of turns that are required in N2 and N, N1 only the ratio is decided over here. Then further your uh, output current that is your PO by VO which is 3.33 ampere and what is the delta IL that means uh, this current the, the ripple in inductor current. For this forward converter it is given by this equation N2 by N1 V in. So, that is the voltage uh, that is going to appear over here and when the diode conducts so N2 by N1 into V in and uh, then minus of VO by your L multiplied by DTS will be your delta IL current and so that turns out to be equal to 0.75 amperes. So, uh, what is uh, the maximum current here that will be IO plus delta IL by 2 and the minimum current of the is inductor current will be IO minus delta IL by 2. Now, if we see the nature of the current that is going to flow through I2. So, when this diode conducts uh, at that time the current is equal to the inductor current. So, the maximum current the secondary winding will be carrying will be equal to the I L current. And then uh, the same then gets uh, reflected on uh, this primary side and of course, you have to multiply the turns ratio. So, accordingly these uh, uh, waveforms are drawn. So, this is the gate pulse waveform 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 with the duty ratio. This is the flux waveform, this is the inductor current. You can see that here uh, the minimum and the maximum of the inductor current are written and uh, the secondary current. So, the secondary current the peak is same as equal to the inductor current. And for the primary you multiply the turns ratio and then that is what is the peak of the primary current that you obtain and when the primary conducts and that is the time the secondary also conducts. Uh, and uh, when the switch is off in this uh, period uh, both the primary and the secondary windings are not conducting. So, that is why these currents are 0. So, we see that uh, this is the nature of the current waveform for the primary winding and the secondary winding. And so, what uh, we have to do then is calculate the RMS values of these currents. Now, you know how to calculate RMS uh, values, there are standard equations for it. So, that is uh, how it has been done. 
for the secondary it turns out to be 2.35 amperes for the primary it turns out to be 11.77 amperes. And uh, then uh, further for the primary what we see is that uh, the voltage is 12 volt and uh, the uh, secondary voltage it turns out to be 60 volt according to the number of turns ratio that uh, uh, the ratio of number of turns uh, that we obtained. So, then finally to design the transformer what are the specification that uh, uh, we get. So, these are the transformer voltages from primary and secondary then these are the transformer currents. Switching frequency is already chosen duty ratio is also already chosen. Then uh, uh, we use the current density of this value 3 into 10 power 6 ampere per meter square and operating flux density we take it as equal to 0.25 tesla. Further we choose the core material according to the switching frequency as uh, equal to ferrite. So, core material depending on the switching frequency and this uh, operating flux density we can choose and ferrite uh, is the material that is chosen here and the window utilization factor is chosen as 0.4. So, then now uh, what we do is uh, all the values that we have obtained we uh, apply those in the area product equation. So, we have everything and so here uh, that is what uh, we uh, substitute here for the, the area product. And so, this is what is the area product that we are going to obtain and here we are using doing the area product uh, calculation only for the primary and the secondary winding. Then based on the area product uh, you look for um, data sheets of uh, different cores that are available and uh, then finally we chose uh, this uh, core whose area product is 4800 uh, mm power 4 it is E30 and uh, these are the various other uh, specifications of the code uh, that are written over here the winding area minimum winding width etc. And so, these are the dimensions of the core that are uh, shown here. Then uh, you further note down various other parameters uh, related to the core. Uh, so, that is your magnetic path length MPL the core weight and uh, then mean length turn, uh, cross sectional area of the core, the window area, the area product and the permeability uh, of that relative permeability of the material and the core dimensions. Then further we uh, once we have obtained the cross sectional area of the core. So, uh, now we can uh, uh, substitute uh, those values in uh, the equation to obtain the number of turns n 1. So, in this equation we um, substitute those uh, values here the switching frequency the maximum flux density k con is 0 0.5 and uh, v 1 is 12 volt it is the input voltage which goes to the primary winding. So, number of turns obtained is 2 similarly we obtain the number of turns of the secondary winding which is your uh, obtained as 10. Now, we have uh, to find out the number of turns uh, for the tertiary winding and how much current it carries. Now, the tertiary winding will be carrying much uh, lesser current because it is a demagnetizing winding. So, uh, what is the role of this uh, demagnetizing winding is that uh, once this uh, flux is uh, reached uh, while the switch was on, we uh, uh, want uh, whatever was the magnetizing current that was flowing in the primary winding that all of a sudden cannot uh, become 0 because it is a practical transformer and not an ideal transformer. So, uh, then uh, uh, somebody has to carry that current and that is what is carried by the tertiary winding. So, uh, then uh, uh, the magnetizing current uh, that is associated uh, with the primary winding then gets reflected in the tertiary winding. So, that is uh, this nature of the current of the tertiary winding and uh, that current is uh, associated uh, with uh, this, uh, this flux. So, 
first of all we find out the magnetizing inductance Lm value and that we can find out by referring it to the primary winding. So, magnetizing inductance Lm of the primary winding will be given by this mu rc n1 square ac by Lm. So, that turns out to be uh, this 13.18 micro Henry. Now, uh, we want to uh, demagnetize such that that uh, it is uh, the, that uh, the core gets uh, demagnetized before uh, this uh, interval that is 1 minus uh, DTS interval before the switch turns on again we want the flux to become 0. So, accordingly this relationship has to hold true that is N3 by N1 DTS should be less than 1 minus of DTS. So, that gives us that N3 should be less than N1. So, now uh, what we obtained is that N1 is equal to 2. So, if N1 is equal to 2 that means uh, your uh, N1 uh, N3 has to be less than that. So, obviously you have to choose N1 as equal N3 as equal to 1. So, that is that N3 is being chosen as equal to 1 and the magnetizing current uh, uh, we can find out that is uh, V in by Lm A into Tm and uh, Tm interval is uh, being taken as uh, 0 0.25 times uh, the whole uh, period uh, that is uh, the uh, 5 microsecond which turns out to be as 1.11 amperes. And uh, we have to refer it uh, to the uh, tertiary winding. So, that uh, turns out to be as equal to 2.22 amperes and according to N1 being equal to 2 and N3 being as equal to 1. So, now we have got N1, N2, N3 all the 3 number of turns uh, and now what we need is to select the wire. So, uh, this is uh, uh, the gauge calculation or sectional area calculation for the primary winding. So, I 1 RMS by J M. So, this is what it turns out to be and uh, we can select a, uh, a wire whose gauge is greater than what we have obtained. So, accordingly 11 is what is chosen A W G 11 and similarly the calculation is done for the other two windings also and accordingly 18 and 26 uh, A W G wires are chosen for secondary and the tertiary windings. Now, let us uh, look uh, into a demo of uh, practically designing this transformer. Now, I will show the design procedure for transformer design. The transformer is designed for a forward converter with input voltage of 12 volt, output voltage 30 volt and the duty ratio 0 0.5 and the switching frequency is 200 kilohertz. Based on area product, the core that is selected is E-shaped ferrite core made by ferrox cube. Its dimension is 30 mm into 15 mm into 7 mm. This is bobbin where windings will be done. For three windings of the transformer, three copper wires are selected. This is enameled uh, copper wire of 11 AWG. This is used for first winding of transformer. This is enameled copper wire of 18 AWG. This is used for second winding of transformer. This is enameled copper wire of 26 AWG which is used for third winding of transformer. And this is tape that will be used for uh, securing these two cores. Now, I will start winding this 18 AWG wire for second winding of transformer. The number of turns calculated for second winding is 10. So, this is the first turn, this is the second turn and similarly I will go up to 10 turns. Now, as you can see this 18 AWG wire has been wound. The number of turn is 10 and this is the second winding of transformer. Now, I will uh, secure this second winding using the tape. Now, I will start winding this 11 AWG wire for the first winding of transformer. So, number of turn is 2. So, this is the first turn and this is the second turn. And now, I, I will secure this using the tape. 
Now I will use this 26 AWG wire for the third turn of transformer. Here the number of turn is only 1. Now I will secure this using tape. Now I will assemble the transformer. One code is placed here. Now I will place the second code here. Now I will use the tape to hold them together. This is the final look of the transformer. So this is the first winding. This is the second winding. And this is the third winding. 